Um, so this right here basically is the foundation of antennas, where if you pass current through a wire um, at an alternating current, th that wire is going to propagate into space. And likewise, if you get an electromagnetic field that's flying in the air and you detect it through like an antenna of some sort, uh, that will also uh, be captured. So um, in this case, this was what I was talking about, where this is kind of a fancier antenna. Not really, but looks a lot fancier. This is really a simplistic antenna. Now, this guy is just this guy right here where you see this little coaxial cable. This is kind of the feed circuit going in. And then basically uh, these two uh, ends of the antenna is where the wave radiates. So this is, some, this is shielded, meaning this has metal surrounding it to prevent the wave from propagating. Meanwhile, this is not shielded. We want the electricity to actually escape and start flying away. So when you think of antennas, just think of a device that converts electricity into flying electricity, because that's really what electromagnetic waves are. It's just electricity that flies, it's alternating current that starts propagating in the air. And then likewise, in the case of reception, um, the antenna does the complete uh, reverse of that in that it captures the flying electricity or the flying alternating currents or the electromagnetic wave and is able to convert it into actual current going through a wire. Now, this is exactly what's happening in here. In this case, this antenna is a little different. As you can see, we're not just feeding a wire, we're feeding kind of this uh, obscure rectangular hollow thing that's eventually feeding into this pyramid shaped thing that's also hollow. And that's pushing waves here. And then that's taking the waves and reflecting them over there. So there's really like a multi-step process going on. And this is essentially a dish antenna or a reflector antenna where this thing right here, that big shape over there, all it's doing is it's just reflecting. It's essentially a mirror. Now, when you think of mirror uh, with visible light, for example, if I were to take a mirror and hold it against the light, it's going to reflect the light. That's because mirrors reflect visible light. But in the case of RF and microwaves, for example, um, the, the frequencies that we deal with in terms of antennas, um, we tend to use metal because metal is what reflects electromagnetic waves at these lower frequencies. Now this horn antenna is nothing but a feed. So again, the waves are coming through these waveguides and it's being fed into this horn. And this horn is essentially propagating the signal towards this dish. And then this dish is reflecting things back to your destination. Now, as you can see, this thing is huge. And it turns out with antennas that the larger you make them, the more directional you can make them such that they can reach further distances. And again, depending on your application, um, that will be um, something to keep in mind. Now, where are antennas used? They're used in various different applications um, such that, um, mainly wireless communication applications or wireless sensing or scanning or detection or imaging. Basically any type of application where you're able to send something and you want to have that thing that you're sending, in this case, the electromagnetic wave, interact and be sent back. Um, and again, this can be used for science. This can be used for communication. As we can see here, we can see it like on airplanes. We can see it on um, helicopters, on satellites, where you can, uh, all these devices need to communicate with something. For example, a satellite needs to communicate with the earth. Otherwise it's just a piece of metal floating in space. Um, and likewise, it's not just for communication. Communication means we're putting signals on these waves and we're sending them through the antenna. But there are other applications, such as, for example, uh, being able to sense, to scan, to detect, uh, being able to um, sense. Um, in other words, like if you have a hurricane, for example, and you're looking from up above, you can either use a camera or you could use like a radar, which needs to use an antenna. Now, uh, Xavier, we have a professor here who's very good at antennas, especially at wearable antennas. And I think wearables in general is probably one of the like uh, most exciting and interesting applications for um, antennas. So if you have any interest or um, ideas about doing research in the area of wearables uh, or antennas in general, I would say, Xavier, we have a professor who's an expert on that and that is Dr. Rod. So definitely reach out to him if you have questions. Obviously, you could reach out to me as well. Um, so now on to the real stuff, now that you know what an antenna is. Again, does anyone have questions so far? No? Okay, cool. Straightforward. So how do you actually design an antenna, right? So that's the scale that's very important, antenna design. Um, well, you first start with the application. So if someone comes to you and says, hey, what antennas, um, I, I want you to design an antenna, first question should be, okay, 
what exactly are you trying to achieve with that antenna? And basically that application will help you determine what it is that you want your antenna to be about, whether it's the frequency you're interested in or the bandwidth. Um, and also based on some constraints they may give you, they may say, hey, I need it to be like this size or I need it to be like a little small or I need it to be a little big or I need it to not weigh too much. Um, and there will always be a trade-off, you know, uh, whether it's like an electrical mechanical trade-off or whether it's an entirely electrical uh, trade-off, that's that, that will always be the case with design, but we're going to see how that actually plays out. Um, generally, a good antenna engineer will have the optimal design for a given application. How do you evaluate the performance of an antenna? Um, there are two ways to evaluate the performance. One is the mechanical aspect. Two is the electromagnetic aspect. Now, um, the mechanical aspect is very simple, kind of like what we discussed last time when you're designing CAD, is you want to make sure it's not going to break, it's not going to snap, it's going to withstand vibration, it's going to withstand temperature fluctuations. Now, in the case of like a satellite antenna, if you have an antenna that's deployed from a satellite in space, um, that antenna will face the sun, which is going to get really hot, but then it's going to not look at the sun, which means it's going to get really cold. So there are considerations that are mechanical to take into account. Now, obviously, more importantly, is the electromagnetic aspect is once you design an antenna, you want to make sure it performs really well. And that means you want to make sure the insertion loss is very low, meaning not much of your energy going from the wire to the antenna is getting lost. Um, but also you want to make sure that the antenna is efficient, and meaning you're designing in a way that once your, your electricity is being fed to it, it's actually propagating most of it and not wasting it due to heat or due to anything of that sort. Um, finally, you want to look at the radiation pattern. So based on where you want your waves to go, um, the radiation pattern will basically take some shape where it tells you, okay, if you want your waves to go everywhere, you probably want to design an antenna that is omnidirectional, meaning sending waves in every direction. Direction. If you want it to be directional, then you want it to likely go in a specific direction, okay? So in the case, this is like a very simple example. If you want to design a horn antenna, this is an example of a directional antenna. So if I were to look back here, I told you that this dish was being fed by this horn. So if I want to design something like this horn, um, this is basically what it would look like in CAD. First, you'd want to take the dimensions. You would want to make sure the lengths are right. Um, everything looks good geometrically because antenna design is all really about geometry. Then you want to draw it up in CAD and then you want to actually mesh it. If you remember the meshes is what actually helps you simulate it because that's where the electric, electric current goes through. And based on that, you're able to see where the waves are propagating. And then once you do that, then you run the simulation and bam, you get some results. So in this case, this, this is an antenna Sue and I designed way back. Um, and it's basically, these are three important metrics to track. So if you, if you look back here, I was talking about if, uh, insertion loss, I was talking about directivity, and I was talking about uh, radiation pattern. Efficiency, let's just assume that we designed it to be efficient. We didn't mess up. We used the proper geometry. Um, so these are the three things that we're looking at here. This is insertion loss, and the axes look a little small here. It's not very clear. This is basically showing you your frequency on one axis and, and your reflection on the other axis. This means how much of the signal going into the antenna is actually getting reflected, which is not good. Now, in this case, this is like around minus 28 dB. So this is very low um, in the case. Uh, and we'll talk about what these numbers mean later on. So don't be too overwhelmed by that. Um, as far as gain, this means how much of your signal is actually being directed in one place. And again, in this case, because the horn was pointing upwards, we noticed that most of the energy, if the horn was over here, most of the energy is propagating north, which makes sense, right? Because that's where we designed the flare opening of our horn, horn to be. And then once that happens, uh, again, we have some indication of how much the gain is. And again, this is decibels. We're going to talk about that separately. This is really just a unit of, of saying um, magnitudes. Like instead of saying, oh, 100, like 10, 100, 1,000, 100,000, we can just say 10 dB, 20 dB. We'll talk about that. It's kind of like a new language uh, that we use commonly in this field. And then finally, the radiation pattern, which is what I was talking about, which kind of actually actually goes hand in hand with this. So if you look at this guy and then you look at it from like a 2D perspective, this is exactly this guy. And the different colors are just showing different frequencies because here I, I, I scan for different frequencies. But if we focus on the red one, for example, like 1.1 terahertz in this case, and let's just assume this is the radiation pattern associated with it. This is telling you that, hey, if this is where most of your energy is going, such that if you have like a receiver over here, that's gonna be perfect because most of your energy is propagating in this direction. Um, however, if you have like something that's like here or here, 
most of the signal is not flowing in that direction. So you're probably not gonna catch any signal. So this is actually something very important to understand about antennas is based on, again, application, based on what it is that you hope to achieve with the antenna, uh, you can design it to either go to, to send signals everywhere, or you can design it to send signals in a specific direction, okay? Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, cool. So we actually have an in-class assignment. So um, again, I don't want myself to just do all the talking. I want you to actually do some of the thinking um, with me. And if I were to come to you and say, hey, I want you to design an FM radio antenna uh, based on what I just told you, um, believe it or not, this is kind of how industry works. So when, once you go get like a full-time engineering job or an internship, many times uh, you're not gonna get specific assignments. For example, in um, almost all of my internships, there were times where I would get something specific, but there were many times where I would be told, hey, go figure out how to do that. Uh, in fact, in my very last internship at NASA JPL, I was hired to figure out everything from scratch. So I was basically on my first day described an idea of what people wanted. And they said, hey, we want a control system that does this and that. And I said, okay, do you have any requirements? They're like, no, can you figure out the requirements? So this is actually a very realistic situation that happens in the real world where you're told something a little vague um, and you're kind of forced to figure it, out, figure it out on your own. So it's actually very valuable that we sit down and do this because again, if I were to tell you, uh, we're gonna, and, and this right here, we're gonna go kind of step-by-step step how to actually approach, how to think about that and then actually implement it uh, using CAD, for example, as the first step. So if I were to design if I were to tell you, okay, let's say I am um, hiring you to work on some project or like, let's say I'm a manager and I say, hey, um, can you design an FM radio antenna for broadcasting purposes? And that's the only thing I tell you. And then I walk away and then I leave you to do some thinking. Um, what are the three, based on what I presented to you in the previous three slides, and you guys can brainstorm with each other. What is, what are the three things that you would ask initially. Like if I were to just say, hey, make me this antenna for FM radio, um, there's probably three requirements or three things you're interested in asking me. And I, I added the first letter of each. Um, so what do you think these things are? You can just kind of shout it out or you can think about it. Okay, yes, yeah, so frequency, that's important. Bandwidth. And see, this is kind of a little vague, but so these are both electromagnetic properties. You'll probably also want to understand if there's any mechanical requirements or constraints, right? Like, does it have, can it be too big? Can it, can it be, is there a size or length limitation? So this C actually stands for constraint. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fix it. So I'm just gonna say, okay, frequency, and then this is gonna be bandwidth, and then this is just gonna be constraints, okay? Now, in this case, this was an omnidirectional antenna, okay? So, okay, for, the first three, it's probably going to be the same. That's fine. But what about the fourth element? Because I am bringing, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you instead of just designing an omnidirectional, meaning it's sending messages everywhere. I want you to give me something that is directional, such that it has a focused signal that is going in a certain direction. So, what would be the missing element here that you're interested in asking me about? Gain, exactly. So, if you recall from this slide over here. I showed you this little uh, this little drawing, which shows you the antenna gain based on which direction the signal is propagating. So if you want something that's directional, you want to tell me, hey, how directional you want it to be, um, because that's gonna be, that's gonna matter a lot. Okay. So let's actually get to work. So if I were to give you these things, um, okay. Now that we you asked me about the frequency, you asked me about the bandwidth, you asked me about the constraints. For the very first one, I. The frequency, let's say I'm interested in 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, so I'm actually gonna write this down, 2.4 gigahertz, okay. For bandwidth, um, I don't really care. I'm probably gonna send very short messages, um, something very, very small, kind of like almost like pulses. So I'm not really interested in bandwidth. As far as constraints, I want it to be mechanically robust and I want it to I want to make sure that I can put it on top of a car it can be placed in planar car surface okay so if I knowing what I just told you what would you do what would be the very first step how do you relate the physical antenna to these random numbers that you just told us so then I go ahead and figure it out so then 
um, I can go to Google and say, hey, okay, what kind of omnidirectional antenna can I use? Or like, let's say I Google omnidirectional antenna and I see, um, like, let's say I go to images and I see, okay, I see like these sticks and okay, what is this stick? For example, I can go figure out what things exist commercially. And then I quickly look around and I say, I see, oh, okay, this is called the mon monopole antenna. So then I go and look up monopole antenna that seems to do the job. And that's basically a piece of wire that basically propagates signals everywhere. Okay, this is actually what you see on a car. This is what you would see on an old cell phone. It's just a wire that's just sending signals everywhere. Okay. So, and again, this is an example of it. So now I can take it a step further. I can try to um, figure out what the um, lengths are, for example, like Peter has mentioned. So like I, I, for example, find this link and I click on it and I see, okay, monopole. And it's talking about the monopole. And then I scroll down and I'm like, okay, cool. This is interesting stuff. And then I don't initially get what I want. And then I go on Google and I say, okay, how do you calculate length of a monopole antenna? Okay. And you will, you can like find an online calculator or you can even go to Google and for example, find like a monopole antenna. Um, and what we're interested in, we're interested in like equations. So in this case, we can see that like a quarter wave antenna. So, okay, so then we can take it a step further. We can say how to calculate length of a quarter wave antenna. That's basically one idea of the monopole. And basically is, um, so then I go and I look for it and then I, let's say, look for some equations. And then I was able to find a calculator online. And then basically what this calculator is doing is it's taking the wavelength and it's dividing it by four, hence um, quarter wave antenna. So going back to my requirements, okay, now I have a basic, and obviously I'm going through this very fast, just to kind of give you, get you through the workflow. But okay, so now I have a frequency. My first task is to change it to a wavelength. And then my next task is to convert it into an actual antenna length, okay? So then one way is, again, I Google how to convert um, frequency to wavelength, or you could even do, I mean, you could apply the equation or you could even say what wavelength is 2.4 gigahertz. And okay, let's say it's about 12 and a half centimeters, okay? So I already figured this out. So it's 12.5 centimeter. And now I wanna take my antenna length. And again, if you remember from the equation of the monopole, so quarter wave, wave antenna equation, I, I mean, it's, it's basically the wavelength over um, one four and right here. So one fourth of the wavelength. In this case, this is a dipole, which has two monopoles, but right here, for example, this is what we're talking about. This is a monopole. Um, and then I basically divide this by four and then that gives me 6.25 and then that's 3.125, I believe, right? So, okay, so then if this is my antenna length in centimeters, bandwidth, if I don't really care, um, bandwidth generally can be associated with like, let's say the thickness of this specific case. We're not gonna worry about that too much. So, okay, so now I want a 3.125 centimeter antenna. Um, you don't care, I don't care about the bandwidth. So that's really all I need to know as of right now. Um, and then as far as constraints, I want it to be mechanically robust playing on a planar surface. Again, that's kind of a vague requirement. So we're gonna worry about that a bit more when we think about materials. So next step is, okay, now I have my lengths. I figured out what exactly to do. I'm gonna go to actually open up ANSYS Workbench and I'm gonna try to design this thing, okay? Um, and this is again, gonna be very simple because this is a monopole. Again, I can go to Google for inspiration and I see that most of these take the shape of cylinders. So I'm probably just gonna design a cylinder that's very thin, maybe not too thin because I actually want it to be robust. If, if you make something very, very thin, then it's likely to break. So I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna wait on the workbench to open up and it just did. Any questions so far? Okay, about that, are you, do you understand what's going on in terms of, again, requirements, how to think about it, how to actually go and extract values, now that you have the values, you actually go in and, and get something to work up and running. Um, so in this case, I could go with like, I don't know, electric or magnetostatic, let's say if I'm interested in some field effect, but let's say in this case, I'm actually just interested in the um, 
I'm, I'm only interested in just making the geometry. I'm only interested in the CAD file. So I'm just gonna, uh, there's no reason to go and add more computational constraints uh, strength since I'm, I don't plan on doing any simulations today. So if you want to just play around with CAD and practice your CAD skills, instead of choosing one of the physics uh, simulations, since you're not gonna simulate anything, you can just go to geometry and that's basically gonna allow you to go around and play around with that CAD. Um, so we're just gonna wait for that to open up. So anyway, um, again, because I don't have any bandwidth con con constraints and I still don't know how to think about the thickness problem, again, and because the requirement was very vague, I'm just gonna give an arbitrary value to the thickness for now, okay? But I don't actually want to extrude it. I wanna give it some length. So I'm gonna end my sketch right here. And then I'm gonna just, uh, as, I, as I go hover over it, I'll see that there's it turns yellow and there's these two arrows going back and forth. So I'm just gonna drag it and I can go in either direction. Let's say I go to the top and then I'm gonna give it, um, here, I'm gonna drag it and then I'm gonna give it 12.5 centimeter. Or no, actually we decided it was 3.125 centimeter. Okay, and I'm gonna press enter. Um, and this is basically what it would look like. Now obviously it's a little too thick so what I can go back is I can um, try to go back and change the dimension of that. Um, but for example, this right here, even though it is very wide. Now, now because it's very thick, the antenna, if you make an antenna, especially on directional antenna, extremely thick, you're basically gonna allow more frequencies to be captured by, because basically what you're doing is, instead of making it narrow, so again, if we go back and let's say, draw something that's very narrow, let's say. Okay, I press this wheel right here. So if I, um, so if I, this is how I zoom in, zoom out with the wheel, but if I grab it, touch it and hold it and, and move things around, um, then I can move it like that. And if I end up with like a really messy situation like that, I can always go to the plan view or I could also go here and click on top. Um, and that's gonna basically take me here and then I can zoom out. Um, also, if I click shift and hold that wheel, it's gonna like zoom in now kind of very fast. And then if I hit control and click that wheel, it's gonna allow me to translate. So left and right, okay? Um, so yeah, this is just basic navigation. Um, so, okay, now we have like a one millimeter circle. And again, I could either pull it or I can um, go, for example, I can go to the sketching plane here um, and I can pull. When I click on pull, I can add, for example, um, and then again, let's say 12.4, again, I keep forgetting 3.25 centimeter. Yeah, that's going to be my antenna. So as you can see, this is going to be a lot narrower. And again, I'm going to go, for example, choose a I don't know, front look so I can see how tall it would be. And basically, if I were to take this, and again, like let's say I place a surface, um, rectangular surface on the bottom just to give it like a kind of a ground plane. So I'm going to go and select bottom here, for example, just so I can give it the bottom. And then I can go to sketch again, um, or I can just click on rectangle. And it's going to automatically take me to the sketching view. Um, and then let's say I give it like some sort of rectangle. Oh, there we go. Yeah, let's say I make it nice and symmetric. Okay, let's say it's sure four by six. And then I can again go and do the same and I can extrude it a little bit. So as you can see, it's a little planar. So I can, let's say, extrude that a little bit down just a tiny bit. And then bam, that kind of gives it a little bit of like support and structure. Now, let's say I don't want to do that. Um, give it the support and structure is gonna be is gonna be in one piece. Now, obviously, if this is metal and this is also metal, uh, that's not gonna be good because then this, if 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 I want electrical current only to flow through this and only use this as like mechanical structure without current flowing through it, what do I need to do? Anyone have any idea? Put an insulator or spacer in between. Yeah, so I could put an insulator or, yeah, exactly. Right, because I said I'm gonna use it as a ground plane. So in this case, it needs to be a conductor. Uh, but let's say I'm not using it as a ground plane. Let's say I'm only using it uh, as a structural support. Then I would. No, you can just make the whole thing like an insulator. So you could change it to a material uh, that is insulating, okay? Now, once I do that, let's say, um, let's say I want to go ahead and apply some analysis to it. And if you remember, for example, one of the easiest ones is the structural analysis where you, again, you put some support. So let's say I wanna fix this as a support, right? Because we're gonna place this on top of a car. 
and then we want to like push some force over here let's see like something falls on it or someone pushes it um and, and like either direction what happens but the problem is um i kind of uh i instead of clicking on structural static if you remember in the workbench i clicked on geometry so i don't have the capacity to go and add a simulation so are we totally screwed or do you think there's a way around this yes exactly right so it's not the end of the world because i can just save what i have right here because again if you remember if you were to include a new type of physics simulation the very first thing is going to ask you anyway is geometry and you would have to save the geometry so in this case let's say we chose the geometry again just to practice our cat skills and we kind of were going aimlessly with it but now suddenly we actually want to apply it to structural static um that's going to be okay so again i'm going to save it i'm going to go to file i'm going to save this and i'm going to name it my 2.4 gigahertz antenna okay so believe it or not we just designed a 2.4 gigahertz antenna now this can work for wi-fi this can work for bluetooth because these frequencies are around 2.4 gigahertz or let's say you have some type of radio that broadcasts at 2.4 gigahertz uh, that you're interested in designing so bam that's really all it took so now let's say we go we go back and we're interested in making our uh static structural we're going to just create a standalone system over here independent of the other one and then for geometry we're going to import geometry and I, actually i don't even need to browse it just suggested it to me so it's oh please uh, okay i oh too late <laughs> all right so you're supposed to right click on it to get the import geometry if you double click it's just going to create a new geometry but that's fine because i think we can still import it from over there so let's see all right so while that loads up uh were you do you guys are, you guys have answers open up opened up in front of you were you able to keep up with like the length of the cylinder and whatnot yes kind of okay all right cool so while that loads up does anyone have any questions or you want me to track back and and do something again from scratch again use this lecture time ask stupid questions ask silly questions because this is really a chance to do that um okay so okay so like for example here let's go back here again i'm gonna just delete it from scratch so you could change it using the dimension tool but let's say you're saying once i want to extrude it or here like let's say or like for example in this case i'm exchanging it once you let go it disappears and it doesn't let you change the number right well, in this case, what I'm doing is I'm just holding the mouse. I'm not letting go of it. And as I'm holding it with my right hand, I'm putting the thickness in my left hand and then I press enter. Okay. Yeah, no problem. And then of course you could always like, there's a, I think there's a dimension tool that you could use, but you cannot use it once you extrude. So you'd have to go back to the sketch. So this is kind of an easier way uh, to do it. Um, okay. So, and again, I would basically add my, well, I don't, I don't think I, I did not save that. I'm not going to save it. Please tell me you did not get saved. All right, it may have been saved. So that's, that's okay. Um, so again, I'm going to go back here. And for geometry, I'm going to right click. I'm going to import geometry. I'm going to hope that my 2.4 gigahertz antenna is still that. Okay, so now that that's imported, uh, I believe I can just go ahead and click on the model. Okay. So again, today we learned a different way on how you can Get a geometry you can either do it from scratch or once you have a simulation you're interested in you can just import it um and again uh, so while that loads up what we've done is actually something very remarkable i mean we kind of went through it very fast but this is why these lectures are recorded i want you to go back and re-watch how i did what i just did uh is that we started we first defined what an antenna is and why not and again assuming you have some understanding of antennas uh we then kind of figured out uh, based on, we, we got like some very abstract assignments. We were able to convert that assignment into requirements. We were able to take requirements into measurements, and then we we're able to take the measurements into CAD. Um, this next week before next class, I will announce the first project and it's gonna be something related to this. So just a quick hint, what we did was kind of, was a monopole antenna over here. And then what, what we have not had the chance to do is a patch antenna. And a patch antenna is basically like literally like a piece of rectangle that you can slap on the side of a CubeSat and it's, it's very cool. So we'll talk about that next time. But what I want you to go ahead and do is before next class, download ANSYS electronic desktop. And what this electronic desktop is gonna allow us to do is actually simulate waves. So Workbench is really only allowing us to deal with the structure itself. 
but the workbench, but but the electronic desktop is going to allow us to access ANSYS HFSS, which is the actual antenna propagation software. Luckily, it's free. So I think if I go on Google, um, ANSYS HFSS download, um, or ANSYS electronic desktop download students, or right here, ANSYS electronics desktop student. Um, it's going to take me to a page, and then bam, should be free um, right here. So I'm going to put a link to this in the chat, but I'm also going to um, probably include it in an email 